If you've ever bought something off of Instagram because a Green Beret told you to, go ahead and hit that like button. Guys, welcome back to the Box Builder Breakdown. I'm the Box Builder coming to you live from Giver HQ. If this is your first time on the Box Builder Breakdown, you're in for a treat. I'm going to, for the first time, predict something that's happening inside of this box. As we always say at the beginning, if you have a brand you want us to unbox, comment with that brand below. If we pick your brand, we'll order it, pay for it, unbox it here, critique it, pack it up, ship it to you as a thanks for contributing to the community. Okay, today we have Echelon, which is a energy drink that's positioning itself against like um, Red Bull. In fact, they say for amplified performance and a clean burn. I see their ads a lot, as you could tell. And they say there's no crash for when you can't afford to crash. I bought this because Strontium, a Green Beret dog handler, told me to. And I am susceptible to anything that involves a dog selling me a product. I have like 40 dog toys right over there. Okay, so on the Box Builder Breakdown, we go over tips and tricks for direct-to-consumer brands with the added benefit of my 20 years in the box industry going over what they're doing with these brands, how you can do it better, and what they can do to improve their product unboxing. We use eight criteria. Doorstep impression, first contact, a shake test, an unboxing score, a pack fill score for like what's going on inside of here. I'm guessing there's none of that in here. A damage report, that's gonna come into play. A customization score and an overall box builder breakdown score. How do we score them? One flutes to five flutes. One being the worst, five being the best. Let's dig in. So, first things first, doorstep impression. Okay, we have a branded box, right? You can tell it's Echelon. Immediately, you can see that it is what you ordered. In this instance, I know that I ordered them. Unlike some of the time, the boxes come unprinted and I have no idea what it is, and we all get surprised. It's fun. So, doorstep impression. Printed box, craft, black. Um, this isn't Watt tape, but at least it's branded tape. I mean, it's... I guess it's branded, it's black, it seems to fit their branding. So um, I'm gonna give this four out of five flutes. First contact, so when you pick this box up, what I, what I immediately notice, which no one else is gonna notice, is the registration issue where the print doesn't fall all the way in the score. That's like super deep inside baseball and maybe nobody else is gonna notice that. But when you, this is on your doorstep, I immediately say, oh look, the registration's off. Probably not a standard consumer response, but that's me. You didn't come here for standard consumer breakdown. You came here for box builder breakdown, okay? All right. So, first doorstep impression. Yeah, um, it's a little banged up. I mean, it's a little bit of a sloppy fit, which is never good. Um, and beverages are heavy, so they end up ding dinging up the corners, especially when it's kind of a smaller, dense product like this is. Um, I'm going to give this... Two out of five flutes, pushing three for first contact. Three flutes. Let's do three. I feel generous today. Shake test. There's definitely some can on can action here, which is not going to be good, I think. So we're going to give that uh, two out of five flutes. Unboxing score. Let's get into it. Brought to you by Bradford Knives. Oh, I think I poked a hole in it. Don't cut towards yourself. I'm a trained professional. Love that. Super smooth. All right, let's unbox this. Ooh, that's a nice surprise. Oh, man, this is interesting. We're going to talk about a lot here today. So let's just, let's just first of all, let's show you what we've got. We've got, ooh, man. We've got cans. All right. I'm not sure why they threw these McDonald's napkins in here, but Strontium, Echelon, these literally do nothing. I mean, I don't know if somebody was eating their sandwich from a brown paper bag or something before they put these in here, but they do nothing, literally nothing. Um, I don't think the box is meant to come apart like this. This is a standard front lock rollover, um, and it's not supposed to do that. But here we are. Yeah, that's, um, with a box that's this shallow, this direction, sometimes it makes sense to overlap these minor flaps because they're so small 
this angle right here tends to pull them out, which you guys saw literally live. So um, a lot of times what we like to do is we'll either lock these, so we'll make this one on top longer into this side, and then on the bottom we'll make it that side so they have some like common beam that going across the top and the bottom. So the cut, instead of being up and down, will be almost like a zigzag so that they meet over here and over here so you don't get that floppiness. Nobody likes floppiness when you're getting beverages. Um, I am pleasantly surprised by their use of neon inks here. And once we get all this stuff taken out, I'm going to come up to the camera and show you something that we, I don't think we've seen before. So we've got two sided print. This is two color on model white inside and one color on craft. So black on craft, black on white with, um, this is reversed out white with an overprint of this um, transparent yellow. Okay, again, um, we'll just move the cans aside for now. I'm going to be proven wrong on this, and I'm not happy about it. Again, um, some rest area toilet paper there. Okay, so this is, a, again, a standard, what we would call an e-commerce mailer. Sometimes they're called display mailers. Um, I think there's a couple terms, roll-in, front tuck. A cherry lock mailer, a bunch of different ones. But let's dig into some of this print here. Uh, should we? I think we'll probably cover that under the customization score, actually. So unboxing score, I'm actually pleasantly surprised. I really like the yellow ink on here against the black. It's kind of like a, it gives me sort of a retro -y 80s kind of vibe, but I just like it. Um, so I'm going to say, shockingly, I'm going to give this a four out of five flutes. Pack fill score. Let me get it. It's like literally nothing. Um, I, I don't know why they're in there. I, I mean, look at it. It's like, I mean, it's a McDonald's napkin or Dunkin' Donuts napkin. It's like basically what it is. I don't know why they're there. It's wasted money, but it's there. Pack fill, maybe our first ever zero out of five flutes. I guess we have to do one because I always say one out of five flutes to five, so let's give it one. Damage report, and I'm going to have to eat my words here. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, hang on a second. I was deceived. So these are shrink sleeves, which at the top, if, they're, if the shrink sleeve is thick enough, it can actually look undented, but if you look real close here, if you can see that dented can, the J-Man with the prognostication. But honestly, they're not that dented. Not as dented as the sloppy box would lead you to believe. Yeah, dense. Okay, so it's dancing, denting on the bottom. But not bad. You know, these are not 12-ounce sleeks. These are 9-ounce sleeks. So, um, you know, they're less weight against each other. So perhaps that is why. I'm pleasantly surprised, actually, for what this box looked like when it got to us and the fact that they threw the paper napkins in there. I'm going to give it a, I mean, I'm going to give it a four out of five, four out of five flutes. Well done. Customization score. All right, let's dive into this. Outside printing, like it. Minimal, but it's right on for what you need for a direct consumer brand. It tells people what it is. It gives you all the touch points across uh, the distribution chain. So when the FedEx guy picks this up, when they put it into the warehouse, every time somebody touches this box, they're going to see Echelon and be like, what is that? Why is it so heavy? Why is it clinking around? So I always recommend to put at least the company name and something branded on the outside of a brown box because I think, the, I think FedEx says it's 7 to 13 touches between distribution center and consumer. Uh, so that's 13, 7 to 13 people that will see this box and wonder what is Echelon, you know. So I like that. Now, inside print. We talked about this. This is two-color Flexo inside. And you've got white paper on the background. So anything you see that's white is just the paper showing through where there's no ink. You've got obviously black ink here. And up here you've got a transparent yellow ink. And what do I mean by transparent? Transparent means that the ink is only there to provide a subtle hint of color as opposed to blinding out 
any of the color behind it. So if you had an opaque ink, like this black ink, because you can't see the white through it, it would just be, I mean, you could, you could have yellow, but it wouldn't, look, it wouldn't look like a highlighter. It would look like heavy pigment load. It would look like actual ink laid down. The reason I like this is because they use the real light ink to let the white show through, so it makes it almost pop. One thing I want you guys to notice, we talk about this sometimes with customers, but I don't think we have great examples. Uh, I don't think we've shown a great example on the show here. When you take one ink color and put it over another ink color, they don't ever perfectly align. So for right here, where we've got this logo right here, the white is showing through because there's no black ink around it. When you put this yellow ink on top of it, the yellow ink does not sit exactly in the space left by the black ink. You have to put, you have to bleed it over that edge. So it means the ink goes outside of the bounds of the black ink, and that is called a trap. So the ink, the yellow ink is trapped onto the black ink. And it may not show up, but you can almost see like the yellow ink is kind of highlighted around the edges. And eh, I don't know if it's going to show up. But you can see where the ink, the yellow ink kind of stops and the black ink starts. It's meh, maybe not. But you can see that there's a little bit of extra yellow ink around where the white is. That ensures that you don't get white showing through where there should be ink because no press is going to be exact. I think the best press that I've ever come across that was a multicolor flexo press was uh, half a millimeter and that was a Gopfert six color flexo press and that is still you're going to see that trap on the outside of the the black versus the yellow. So this is um this looks like probably a 16th trap. So nothing like super crazy in terms of the print registration. So it's pretty standard, pretty well done. I thought I was not going to like this, but I actually really like this. I like the ink. I like how they've done it. Uh, the QR code's pretty cool because it, it looks like a third color, even though it's really just white paper showing through. So that's a good use of the substrate to get the outcome you're looking for. So I'm going to give this, I'm going to put this up there with like a four out of five flutes. We're like edging towards five, but I'm going to give it four, four plus. Excellent. Very good. So overall box builder breakdown score, uh, I'm actually pleasantly surprised. I did not think the cans would be as intact as they are, but I stand corrected. It takes a big man to admit he was wrong. There you go. So yeah, this was Echelon. I'm really happy with how this turned out, even though we did not do this box. Again, I just bought this off an Instagram ad. If they'd like to have a better box, I'm happy to do it for them. But, you know, this is fine, too. Overall box builder breakdown score, I'm going to give it uh, four out of five flutes. I think it was well executed. The print, the solid black print is well done. There's not a lot of hickeys or spots on it for how much coverage there is. I like the transparent ink there. Uh, I think they did good. Yeah, overall box builder four. So again, Echelon, if you have a brand that you want us to do a box builder breakdown for, put it in the comments below. We'll buy it, do the show, and then we'll send it to you as a thank you for making that comment. That was a box builder breakdown. I'm the box builder. Be nice to each other. We'll see you next time.